On 1 March 1815 Napoleon Bonaparte escaped from his imprisonment on the Isle of Elba, and launched a bid to recover his empire. A confederation of European powers pledged to stop him. During the period known as the Hundred Days Napoleon chose to confront the armies of Prince Blücher and the Duke of Wellington in what has become known as the Waterloo Campaign. He was decisively defeated by the two Allied armies at the Battle of Waterloo, which then marched on Paris forcing Napoleon to abdicate for the second time. However Russia, Austria and some of the minor German states also fielded armies against him and all of them also invaded France. Of these other armies the ones engaged in the largest campaigns and saw the most fighting were two Austrian armies, the Army of the Upper Rhine and the Army of Italy. The Battle of Waterloo, followed as it was by the advance of the armies of Blücher and Wellington upon Paris, was so decisive in its effects, and so comprehensive in its results, that the great object of the war, the destruction of the power of Napoleon Bonaparte and the restoration of the Bourbon dynasty under King Louis, 18 on 8 July 1815, was attained while the armies of the Upper Rhine and of Italy were but commencing their invasion of the French territory. Had the successes attendant upon the exertions of Blücher and Wellington assumed a less decisive character, and, more especially, had reverses taken the place of those successes, the operations of the armies advancing from the Rhine and across the Alps would have acquired an immense importance in the history of the war. But the brilliant course of events in the north of France materially diminished the interest excited by the military transactions in other parts of France. The operations of the Confederation armies which invaded France along her eastern and southeastern frontier afford a clear proof that amongst the more immediate consequences of the decisive Battle of Waterloo and speedy capture of Paris was there having been the means of averting the more general and protracted warfare which would probably have taken place on these frontiers had a different result in Belgium emboldened the French to act with vigour and effect a stronger defence of these parts of France. French deployments Upon assumption of the throne, Napoleon found that he was left with little by the Bourbons and that the state of the army was 56,000 troops of which 46,000 were ready to campaign. By the end of May the total armed forces available to Napoleon had reached 198,000 with 66,000 more in depots training up but not yet ready for deployment. By the end of May Napoleon had deployed his forces as follows. First Corps cantoned between Lille and Valenciennes. Second Corps cantoned between Valenciennes and Avenay. Third Corps cantoned around Rockroy. Fourth Corps cantoned at Metz. Sixth Corps cantoned at Laon. Cavalry Reserve cantoned at Guise. Imperial Guard at Paris. The preceding corps were to be formed into L.A.R.M.E. Acute du Nord and led by Napoleon Bonaparte would participate in the Waterloo campaign. For the defence of France, Bonaparte deployed his remaining forces within France observing France's enemies, foreign and domestic, intending to delay the former and suppress the latter. By June they were organised as follows. 5th Corps, ARME Acute du Rhine, cantoned near Strasbourg, with a strength of 46 guns and 20,000 minus 23,000 men. More troops guarded the southeast frontier from Basel to Nice, and covered Lyons. 7th Corps, ARME Acute des Alpes, based at Lyons. This army was charged with the defence of Lyons and to observe the Austro-Sardinian Army of Fremont with a strength of 42 to 46 guns and 13,000 minus 23,500 men. First Corps of Observation, ARME Acute du Jura, based at Belfort. This army was to observe any Austrian movement through Switzerland and also observe the Swiss Army of General Berkman. Its composition in June was 38 guns, and 5,392 minus 8,400 men. Second Corps of Observation, ARM Acute du VAR, based at Toulon, with a strength of 10,000 men. There were two other major deployments. 
8,000 men under Clausel cantoned around Toulouse and under Deccan cantoned around Bordeaux guarding the Pyrenean frontier. Lamarck led 10,000 men into La Vendée to quell a royalist insurrection in that region. Upper Rhine Frontier Coalition Order of Battle Army of the Upper Rhine The Austrian military contingent was divided into three armies. This was the largest of these armies, commanded by Field Marshal Karl Philipp, Prince of Schwarzenberg. Its target was Paris. This Austrian contingent was joined by those of the following nations of the German Confederation. Kingdom of Bavaria, Kingdom of Wattenberg, Grand Duchy of Baden, Grand Duchy of Hesse, Free City of Frankfurt, Principality of Russelder Line and the Principality of Rus Junior Line. Besides these there were contingents of Fulda and Eisenberg. These were recruited by the Austrians from German territories that were in the process of losing their independence by being annexed to other countries at the Congress of Vienna. Finally, these were joined by the contingents of the Kingdom of Saxony, Duchy of saxe coburg saalfeld Duchy of saxe meiningen and the Duchy of saxe hildburghausen Its composition in June was Swiss Army This army was composed entirely of Swiss. The Swiss general Niklaus Franz von Balkman commanded this army. This force was to observe any French forces that operated near its borders. Its composition in July was I Division, Colonel von Gaddy, 2 Division, Colonel Fuesley, 3 Division, Colonel Daffre, Reserve Division, Colonel Quartermaster Finzler, the right column, consisting of the 3rd Corps, under Field Marshal the Crown Prince of Wattenberg, and of the 4th Corps, or the Bavarian Army, under Field Marshal Prince Reed, was to cross the Rhine between Germersheim and Mannheim. The left column, consisting of the 1st Corps, under the Master General of the Ordnance, Count Collorda, and of the 2nd Corps, under General Prince Hohenzollern Heckingen together with the Austrian Reserve Corps, the whole being commanded by General the Archduke Ferdinand, was to cross the Rhine between Baal and Rheinfelden. The column formed by the right wing was to be supported by the Russian army, under Field Marshal Count Bartoli de Tolly which was expected to be collected at Kaiserslautern by the 1st of July. The object of the operations, in the first instance, was the concentration of the Army of the Upper Rhine and the Russian Army at Nancy. Start of the campaign As soon as Prince Schwarzenberg was made acquainted with the commencement of hostilities in what is now Belgium, he gave his orders for the advance of his army. The 4th Corps was directed immediately to cross the Saar, and, by turning through the Vosges Mountains, to cut off the French 5th Corps and a general rap, collected in the environs of Strasbourg, from its base of operations, and to intercept its communications with the interior of France. A Russian corps, under General Count Lambert, forming the advance guard of the army of Count Berkeley de Tolly was attached to the 4th Corps of Prince Reed, who was to employ it principally in keeping up the communication with the North German Corps under Prussian General von Hack. Austrian right-wing Austrian 4th Corps On 19 June, the Bavarian army crossed the Rhine at Mannheim and Oppenheim, and advanced towards the Saar River. On 20 June there were some minor skirmishes between advanced posts near Landau and Dahn. On 23 June, the Austrian army having approached the Saar, proceeded, in two columns, to take possession of the passages across the river at Saarbrücken and Saargermines. The right column, under Lieutenant General Count Beckers, attacked Saarbrücken, where it was opposed by the French General Mariage. The Bavarians carried the suburb and the bridge, and penetrated into the town along with the retiring French, of whom they made four officers and 70 men prisoners, and killed and wounded 100 men, suffering a loss, on their own part, a three officers and from 50 to 60 men killed and wounded. Count Beckers occupied the town, posted his division on the heights towards Forbich, and detached patrols along the road to Metz, as far as St. Avold, and to the right along the Saar, as far as Saar Lewis. The left column, consisting of the 1st Infantry Division, under Lieutenant General Baron von Ralievich and of the 1st Cavalry Division, 
under Prince Charles of Bavaria, advanced against Saragamines, at which point the French had constructed a tetrapont on the right bank of the river. After some resistance, this was taken possession of by the Bavarians, whereupon Baron von Ralievich marched through the town, and took up a position on the opposite heights, commanding the roads leading to Buchanum and Luneville. The 4th Infantry Division, under Lieutenant General Baron Zollen, advanced towards the fortress of Bicher, which, however, the French Commandant, General Kreutzer, refused to surrender. The Russian corps, under Count Lambert, attached to the right wing of Prince Red's army, advanced as far as Ottweiler and Raumstein. Prince Reed halts at Nancy on 24 June. Prince Reed occupied Buchanan and detached the cavalry division under Prince Charles towards Falsberg to observe it. His second, third, and fourth divisions, and the reserve, were collected at Saragamines. The Russian troops under Count Lambert occupied Saarbrück, having previously detached the cavalry, under Lieutenant General Chinichev, as far as St. Avald. On 26 June, Prince Reed headquarters were at Morhenga, and, on 27 June, his advanced posts penetrated as far as Nancy, where he established his headquarters on 28 June, from St. Dues Reed detached units to the left, in order to discover the march of General Rapp, who, however, was still on the Rhine, and his retreat had thus become cut off by the occupation of Nancy. Prince Reed halted at Nancy, to await the arrival of the Austrian and Russian corps. Upon his right Lieutenant General Chinichev crossed the Moselle, on 29 June, within sight of Metz, and carried by storm, on 3 July. The town of challens sur marne the garrison of this place had promised to make no resistance, and yet fired upon the Russian advanced guard, whereupon the cavalry immediately dismounted, scaled the ramparts, broke open the gates, sabred a part of the garrison, made the remainder prisoners, including the French general Rigault, and pillaged the town. After remaining four days in the vicinity of Nancy and Luneville, Prince Reed received an order from Prince Schwarzenberg to move at once upon Paris, with the Fourth Corps, which was destined to become the advance guard of the Austrian Army of the Upper Rhine. This order was given in consequence of the desire expressed by the Duke of Wellington and Prince Blücher that the Austrian Army of the Upper Rhine should afford immediate support to their operations in front of Paris. On 5 July the main body of the Bavarian army reached Challens, in the vicinity of which it remained during 6 June. On this day, its advanced posts communicated, by ape and aim, with the Prussian army. On 7 July Prince Reed received intelligence of the Convention of Paris, and at the same time, directions to move towards the Loire. On 8 July Lieutenant General Chinichev fell in with the French between Taylor saint pri and Montmirail, and drove them across the Morin, towards the Seine. Previously to the arrival of the 4th Corps at Chateau Thierry, the French garrison had abandoned the place, leaving behind it several pieces of artillery with ammunition. On 10 July, the Bavarian army took up a position between the Seine and the Marne, and Prince Red's headquarters were at La Ferte sous Duara. Austrian Third Corps On the 22nd of June a portion of the Austrian Third Corps, under the Crown Prince of Wattenberg, took possession of the entrenchments of Germersheim, on the left bank of the Rhine. Lieutenant Field Marshal Count Walmoden was posted, with ten battalions and four squadrons, to observe in blockade of the fortress of Landau, and the Creek Line. The main body of the corps stood between Bruxelles and Philipsburg. On 23 June the corps crossed the Rhine at Germersheim, and passed the line of the Creek without opposition. The Crown Prince was directed to proceed by Wissemberg and Hagenor with a view to complete, in conjunction with the Fourth Corps, the plan of intercepting the retreat of General Rapp. On 24 June the Third Corps advanced to Bergsabon and Niederotterbach, engaged the French at both locations, and drove them back. 
Count Walmoden left a small detachment to observe Landau, and advanced, with the remainder of his force, as far as Rheinsiben. On 25 June the Crown Prince ordered the advance towards the lines of Wissemberg, in two columns. The first column assembled at Bergsiben, and the second moved forward by Niederrotterbach. Count Walmoden was directed to advance upon Lauterberg. The Crown Prince advanced his corps still further along the Hagnor Road. His advance guard pushed on to Ingolsheim, and the main body of the Third Corps reached the lines of Wissemberg, which the French abandoned in the night, and fell back upon the forest of Hagnor, occupying the large village of Serberg. On 26 June the Crown Prince attacked and defeated the French at the last mentioned place, with his right column, whilst the left column, under Count Walmoden, was equally successful in an attack which it made upon the French General Rothenberg, posted, with 6,000 infantry and a regiment of cavalry, at Seltz. On the following day, General Rapp fell back upon the defile of Brumith, but this he quit in the night and took up a favourable position in the rear of the Soufel, near Strasbourg. His force comprised 24 battalions of infantry, four regiments of cavalry, and numerous artillery, and amounted to nearly 24,000 men. The Crown Prince of Wattenberg engaged General Rapp's Army of the Rhine on 28 June at the Battle of La Suffel. But despite outnumbering the French two to one, the Austrian forces were repelled. Rapp, however, withdrew into the fortress of Strasbourg shortly after the action, Austrian numbers telling. The loss of the Third Corps on this occasion amounted to 75 officers and 2,050 men, killed and wounded, while that of the French was about 3,000 men. Austrian left wing the Austrian First and Second Corps and the Reserve Corps, forming the left wing of the Austrian Army of the Upper Rhine, crossed this river at Rheinfelden and Baal in the night of 25 June. On 26 June the First Corps, under Count Karl Order, was directed upon Belfort and Montbelliard, and, on the same day, the Austrian invested the fortress of Hunning. The advanced guard of the Austrian First Corps fought a skirmish with a French detachment of 3,000 men belonging to the 8th Corps of General Le Corbeur, and forced it to withdraw as far as Danmarie. On 28 June the Austrian First Corps attacked the French near Chauvanis, between Danmarie and Belfort, when the French force amounting to 8,000 infantry and 500 cavalry, was driven back upon Belfort. Major General von Scheither of the 1st Corps was detached against Montbelliard, a town fortified and defended by a citadel. After having maintained a most destructive fire against the place, the Austrian troops carried it by storm, with a loss, however, of 25 officers and 1,000 men, killed and wounded. General suspension of hostilities The Third Corps remained in front of Strasbourg until 4 July when it was relieved by the arrival of the Austrian II Corps, under Prince Hohenzollern from the vicinity of Colmar. At this last point the advance guard of the Austrian Reserve Corps, under Lieutenant Field Marshal Stutterheim, moved upon Remiremont, and the main body upon Street, Mario Mines. The Austrian Reserve Corps itself reached Raunler a tape, whence it subsequently moved to Nerf Chateau. The Third Corps, under the Crown Prince of Wattenberg, marched into the vicinity of Merlsheim. On 7 July, Wattenberg reached Luneville, but instead of proceeding to its original destination of Nancy, on 9 July the Third Corps took the road to Nerf Chateau, advancing in columns, one via Bayon and the other via Ramba Villas. These two columns continued their advance, the first by Vorkelers, Joinville, Brienne-le-Chateau, Troyes, and Auxerre, and the other, by Nerf Chateau, Chaumont, Bar-sur-Ober, Vendeuve sur bas bar sur seine and Châtillon, at which points they halted on 18 July. On 21 July, the Corps entered into cantonments between Montbard and Tonnerre. With the exception of a few sorties of little consequence, General Rupp remained very quiet in the fortress of Strasbourg. The news of the capture of Paris by the British and Prussian troops led to a suspension of hostilities which was concluded on 24 July and extended to 
the fortress of Strasbourg, Landau, La Petite Pierre, Hunning, Sale Estate, Lichtenberg, Falsberg, Nerf Brissich and Belfort.